Welcome everyone. Today I am going to be hosting the 2020-2021 Financial Aid Workshop. Um, so some of the questions are, for example, when does the application open? Does anybody want to take a stab at it? I'm just kidding. I know that you guys aren't online right now. So the application opens October 1st and you have until March 2nd to complete the financial aid application. So it covers from fall of the year that you, of the following year that you're applying for to the end of that spring. So for example, when I applied this October, it is actually applying for the 2021-2022 year. When you applied last year, you would, it would be covering this fall that just ended and the spring, okay? So as I mentioned, the application opens October 1st and the deadline to submit is March 2nd. Okay, so we're gonna be going over some topics. The overview is gonna be just checking in with you guys, going over the homepage, how to log in as a student, the demographic information, dependency status and what that means, financial information, and then your FAFSA renewal process for those of you that are just here to get tips on how to renew your financial aid. Okay, so homepage. So this is what your homepage is going to look like when you first go on to the financial aid application. Here we have included a link for you. It would be studentaid.ed.gov forward slash SA forward slash FAFSA. If you already have a username and password, then you're going to click log in. If you need to create a username and password, please click on the start here option. So once again, for those of you that are renewing your financial aid, you're going to just click on log in. For those of you that are, have not applied for financial aid and this is your absolute first time, you're going to click on start here. We're going to move forward to the login page now. So once you um, select one of those two options, you're going to be prompted to select whether or not you are the student or whether you are the parent. So you are going to select that you are the student and you're going to click on the next button where you will be prompted to a website link that looks like this. It's going to request your FSA username, email address, or your phone number. If you are trying to use your phone number to log in, you would have had to register your phone number in order for it to allow you to log in. If you haven't registered your phone number, please do not enter that for this spot. Enter your email address or username, and then you're going to enter your password. Please be mindful that you don't wanna lock yourself out. The website will allow you three attempts before it logs you out. So moving on to the next screen. So as I had mentioned before, once you log in, it's going to give you two options. You're going to either select the renewal if you submitted your FAFSA last year, or you're gonna click start a new FAFSA if, re if you created a username and profile and had never filled out a financial aid application. We wanna make sure that you're applying for the appropriate year. So for example, here we put the 2020, 2021 year, or the 2019-2020 year. So if you're applying for the 2020-2021, you would be covering for this fall that just passed and this spring. The new application that's available is going to be covering 2020 to 2021. So next, Every time you log into your financial aid, it's going to ask you to create a save key. This is different from the password that you use to log into the website. So we wanna recommend that you use your birthday because it would be difficult for you to forget your birthday as the save key. So again, this is different from the password that you use to log into your financial aid. So we recommend that you use your birthday. Once you create a save a key, you're going to click on the blue button at the bottom that says next. 
So this is all for your information. It goes over information that you're going to need when completing your financial aid application. You don't need to click on all of these if you don't want to. You can just click next at the bottom of the application and continue forward with completing your financial aid application. As you are going through this application, there is a button on the top of the screen that says save. We highly recommend that as you are going through your application, you click on the save button so that if your internet were to go down or you were to get logged off, your information that you have entered would not be um, deleted. Okay, so here, you're going to go into your personal information for student. I also want you guys to make a note of at the top, there are different tabs. So you have to fill out every single tab before you complete the financial aid application. So if we look under personal information for student, you will see student demographics, school selection, dependency status, parent demographics, parent financials, student financials, sign and submit, and then a confirmation page, right? So we have to go step by step and we will start with the student demographics page. You will enter your social security number. You want to your first name, your last name, and your middle initial, and your date of birth. It's really important that you guys double check that you entered and spelled your name, your first name, and your last name correctly because it has to match exactly as what you entered when you created your financial aid um, user profile, okay? So it's very important that this is exactly the same as what you did to create your profile. So here for student information, you wanna enter your email address and your telephone number, pretty straightforward. And then you're going to want to enter your mailing address, city, state, and zip code. And then we'll click next. What is your state of legal residence? So this question seems to confuse some of you. I wanna just be clear that this means where have you lived for at least one year and one day? Wherever you have lived, whatever state you have lived in for at least one year and one day, that is what we consider as your state of legal residence. So this is just asking, where have you lived for the last year and one day? So if it's California, you're going to select California. This is asking, did you become a legal resident of California before January 1st, 2015? This will vary depending on your status. So for me, it would be yes. Are you a US citizen? Yes. If you select that you are a permanent resident, you are going to be required to enter some additional information. So just make sure that you have that ready. And if you don't, don't go ahead and pause the video and then come back when you do have that information ready but make sure that you click on save before you do. So next screen, um, what will your high school completion status be when you begin college in the 2020-2021 school year? Will you have earned a high school diploma? What college degree or certificate will you be working on when you begin the 2020-2021 school year? So I selected associate degree general education transfer program. This option is going to vary depending on what your educational goal is. For me, I would like to transfer to a four-year institution. So I select a general education slash transfer program. For some of you, it's going to be earning a certificate or earning a vocational degree. So please select the option that best applies to your situation. The next question asks, Will you have your first bachelor's degree before you begin the 2020-2021 school year? For most of you, it's going to be no. If you have attended a four-year institution, such as a Cal State or UC, and you earned a bachelor's degree, you would have to select yes for this option. If you have not, it would be no. What will your college grade level be when you begin the 2020-2021 school year? So I know that this question um, sometimes can be confusing because for some students, it is not your um, first year or your second year. But if you've already completed one full year at Rio Hondo College, you're going to select second year slash sophomore. 
regardless of how many years you have been here because you won't be considered at a junior level until you transfer out to a four-year institution. So the difference is if you are a first-time college student and it is your first year, this would be first year freshman. If it is your second year, it's going to be second year sophomore. If you have done more than two years, it's still going to be second year sophomore. Okay. Are you interested in being considered for work study? Work study is a job on campus. So this question is asking, would you like to be considered for work study? So additional funds that would allow you to work on campus. If you're unsure, you can put you don't know. We're gonna be moving on to the next section now. Please answer the following question and select next. Your gender identity, how you identify. Okay. The next question is going to ask your student driver's license information. You do not have to provide this if you do not have a driver's license. And even if you do, this is not a requirement for you to complete the application. So if you don't feel comfortable sharing this, you do not have to. If you have it and you don't mind sharing, you can enter it. So then we're gonna answer the following questions and select next. Are you a foster youth or were you at any time in the foster care system? Yes or no? So for me, it's going to be no. I also wanna make note that if you were in foster care, even if it was for one day, you want to select the yes option for this. You will be required to provide a letter from a social worker, but they are asking if you were ever at any time in the foster care system, please select yes, even if it was for one day. Now it's going to ask you what the highest level completed of schooling was for your parents. So for parent one and for parent two. Please remember who you select to be parent one and parent two. So by that I mean, am I putting my mother's information for parent one or my father's information for parent one? Okay, so please keep that in mind as you go through the application who you're selecting for parent one and parent two. Next, we're going to answer the following questions. Student eligibility worksheet. Have you ever received student financial aid? So any type of assistance from the government that paid for your classes. So even if they paid for your classes, but you didn't get any um, additional funds, that would be considered receiving some form of financial aid, right? The next question is going to ask if you've ever been convicted for the possession of sale or illegal drugs for an offense that occurred while you were receiving federal student aid? Yes or no? So based on this question, for me it would be no. It's determined that I'm eligible for federal student financial aid. So we're going to go on to the next screen. So um, if you attended multiple high schools for this next question that we have, please enter the high school that you received your high school diploma or GED from. Okay, so even if you attended four or five high schools, we just want you to enter the one where you received your high school diploma or GED. So for me, it would be Benjamin Franklin High School in the city of Los Angeles, and then you're gonna enter the state. And then we'll go ahead and click next. So it says, based on the information I provided, I may qualify for federal student financial aid. Yay, okay. So the next question is going to ask, do you know the college federal school code? Yes. If you're going to be attending Rio Hondo College, we selected yes here. And then I went ahead and I entered the school code for you guys to know. So for those of you that are going through this workshop and then are going to complete the application, please write this information on a separate sheet of paper. You're going to have to enter the school code so that you don't have to search by it one by one. For those of you that are going to be attending multiple campuses, um, please make sure that you have the other st school student code um, so that you can enter it here as well. You want to list every campus that you're going to be attending for fall or for spring. Okay, selected colleges and housing plans. So for Rio Hondo College, we do not offer on-campus housing. So you're either going to be living with your parent or on your own. So again, Rio Hondo, 
Rio Hondo does not offer on-campus housing. Therefore, you are either living off campus or with your parent or guardian, okay? Once you have selected that option from the drop-down menu, we are going to go ahead and click Next at the bottom right. As of today, what is your marital status? So this question is not asking if you are in a relationship. It is asking if you are married, single, divorced, or widow. So you're going to answer that option from the drop-down menu, and then we are going to click on Next. Okay. So does a student have dependents? Do you now have or will you have children who receive more than half of their support from you between July 1st, 2020 and June 30th, 2021? So for some of you that may be completing this application and may be pregnant at this time, if your child will be born between those days, you, you would select yes. If you have dependents, other than your children or spouse who live with you and receive more than half of their support from you from now through June 30th, you're gonna select yes as well. If it's no, for me it would be no, you're gonna select no and we're gonna go forward to the next option. Student additional dependency questions. You're gonna select all of those that apply to you. If one of them apply, if one of them apply, please select one. If none of them apply, please select none of the above. So answer the following questions to determine if you are required to provide information about your parents on your FAFSA, okay? Then we'll go on to the next question. Student homelessness. So on or after July 1st, 2019, were you homeless or were you self-supporting and at risk of being homeless? Please answer this question and then we are going to click next at the bottom right to go to the next screen. Okay. Dependent student with parental dependent student with parental data. Please pay close attention to the next slides. Okay. So I know that this is a ton of information, but we wanted to make sure that we would put it here for you so that you knew what the difference between a dependent student and an independent student was. So dependent student would basically mean that you are still under the responsibility of your parents or legal guardian, right? So if you were born after January 1st, 1997, you would be considered dependent. As of today, you are not married. If you're not serving on active duty in the U.S. Armed Forces for purposes other than training, you are not a veteran of the U.S. Armed Forces. If you do not have children, you do not have dependents, or if one or both of your parents are still alive, you're considered a dependent student, right? So someone is still claiming you on their taxes. An independent student would be if you were born before January 1st, 1997, as of today, you are married, yes. If you're serving on active duty in the U.S. Armed Forces for purposes other than training, you are a veteran of the U.S. Armed Forces. If you have or will have children who will receive more than half of their support from you between July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. If you have dependents other than your children or spouse who live with you and will receive more than half of their support from you, now and through June 30th, at any time since you turned the age of 13, both of your parents were deceased, you were in foster care, or you were a dependent of the ward of the court. If it has been determined by a court in your state of legal residence that you are an emancipated minor or that your parent or step-parent has legal guardianship over you. If at any time on or after July 1st, 2019, you were determined to be an unaccompanied youth or homeless or were self-supported and at risk of being homeless as determined by your high school or district homeless liaison, the director of an emergency shelter or transitional housing program funded by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development or the director of a runaway program. I'm going to give you guys about 10 more seconds in case you want to screenshot the difference between dependent and independent so that if you're still a little bit unsure, 
you can always revert back to it. And this information is also available on the financial aid website. Okay. What if you have no contact with your parents, right? Because we do have some students who come in and say, well, I don't talk to my parents, I don't get along with my parents, but they're still considered a dependent student. If you have no contact with your parent or parents and don't know where they live, or you left your home due to an abusive situation, you're going to have to complete the FAFSA form and then immediately get in touch with the financial aid office at the college or career school that you plan to attend. The financial aid staff will then tell you what to do next. So regardless of whether or not you have contact with them. In this case, it's specifically saying, if you do not have any contact, do not know anything about them, do not know where they live, you're gonna fill out the application to the best of your ability, and then you're gonna contact the financial aid office so that they can help guide you and tell you what the next steps are. So we're moving on to the next part of student information. If you were considered a dependent student, you are going to have to provide parental information, okay? So for me, I'm considered a dependent student for purposes of the financial aid application. So I'm going to select, I will provide information about my parents. And then I'm going to click the blue button at the bottom right that says next. Okay, as of today, what, if, what is the marital status of your parent? Married or remarried? And when your parents got married or remarried? So you're gonna, for me, it's gonna be married or remarried, right? And then the date that, that they were married or remarried. If your parents are married, you're going to need to know the month and year that they were married. If your parents were separated, divorced, or are a widow, you will need to know the month and date as well, okay? So again, if you're unsure about this date or you don't know or don't remember, you're gonna to wanna to click the save button at the top and you're going to wanna to get this information and then come back and keep going on the application. So you must know your parents' birthday, including the year for this section. If your parents are married, you will need to know the month and year that they were married, okay? So for this section, I wanna make it very clear that if your parents have an ITIN, you would have to enter all zeros for the social security number portion, okay? Do not enter their ITIN number because the application will come back with errors and you'll have to go back in there and enter zeros for their social security number. So don't enter their ITIN number. If they have one, you're gonna enter all zeros. If your parents do have a social security number, you're going to enter that here. And then we're going to go ahead and move forward with the next part of the application. So again, for this section, you must know your parents' um, social security number. You must know their first name, their last name, and their date of birth. And if they have an email address, you would provide it as well. Let's go back. We went to list. Okay. So it will then ask you for your next parent information. So remember who is parent one and parent two. Same information you're going to enter as you did for parent one. And then we'll go to the next screen. So print parent state of legal residence. Again, so this is not asking about your parents' um, residency status, and by that I mean immigration residency status. This is asking what your parents consider to be their state of residence, and this would apply if they lived anywhere in the U.S. for at least one year and one day, okay? So what do your parents consider their state of legal residence? I selected California because my parents have been here for at least one year and one day. And then did your parents become legal residents of California before January 1st, 2015? And this is going to be um, a question that you answered based on your parents' circumstances. And then we'll go ahead and we'll click next. So parent household info. This number should reflect the total number of people who live in your home including your siblings, parents, and yourself. So if you notice, the darker gray areas on this part of the application cannot be manually changed, right? The ones that are white, you can enter information. So for your parents, other children, even if they don't live with your parents, but if your parents are providing 
or more of support. So let's just say, for example, I have a sibling who is off in college, but my parents are still providing money to help them out. So that would still be considered under my parents' responsibility, right? So for this first white box, we want you to enter the number of siblings that you have who your parents are financially responsible for. Please do not include yourself in this number because you have already been included in that number. The next question is gonna ask other people if they live with your parents, your parents provide more than 50% of their support or your parents will continue to provide other than half of their support. Then you would enter that number there. The next dark gray shaded box where I have the arrow is your parents' number of family members in 2020, 2021 household size. So this number should reflect how many people you're including your parents, yourself, your siblings are in your home or a total of how many people you're including your parents, yourself, your siblings or anyone else that your parents are financially responsible for, okay? The next question is going to ask how many people in your household, okay, will be in college this upcoming year? So for me, it would only be one, so I'm going to enter one. But if you have siblings who are gonna be in college, at the same time, you wanna make sure that you adjust that number correctly. So next, the parent tax filing status. So, Every box must be answered in order for you to move on to the next screen. For 2018, have your parents completed their IRS income tax return? For me, it would be already completed. It would be the IRS 1040 form. And in order to find out what your parents filed as, if you have the actual taxes with you, you're going to want to check on the top left corner of the tax returns and it will tell you what form was used to file their taxes, okay? So what is your parents' tax filing status according to their tax return? This can also be found on their tax returns. So for my case, it's gonna be a married, filed, joint. For some, it's gonna be head of household, um, married, filed separately. So make sure that you pay close attention to that. The IRS data retrieval tool, your parents can link their IRS taxes only if they have created a username and password for the financial aid application. If they have not created one, you will not be able to link it to the IRS. Some of the benefits to linking the taxes to the IRS website are that you're less likely to get selected for the verification process. So that's one of the benefits. But again, in order to link it, your parents would have to create, have created a username and password. You don't need to do this in order to move on and continue with the application, okay? So here it's asking, if your parent is gonna link their information to the IRS, they would click on link to IRS. If you will not be linking the information, you will select no thanks, which is that little blue link at the bottom of link to IRS. So what was your parents adjusted gross income for 2018? This amount is found on the IRS form 1049-7. So this is always going to tell you what line you have to look at in the tax returns. So if I had my tax returns here in front of me, I would go to line number seven and I would look at the amount that was placed there. That's the amount that I'm gonna enter into this box. So it's always going to tell you what line of the tax returns you have to look at. So again, this is why it's important to remember who you put as parent one and parent two. How much did your parent one make, right? And how much did your parent two make? So you can't put the total amount that they both made for line one. You want to separate it out. So usually when your parents do your tax returns, they include the W-2 forms in there. Take a look for that in their folder because that will say how much each parent made, parent one and parent two. If you're not sure, please go ahead and ask your parents, save the application, and then come back to fill this section out, okay? For the next section, we're gonna answer the following questions before selecting next. 
You indicated that your parents filed an IRS 1040. Did your parents file a Schedule 1? So if you're unsure, just select don't know. As of today, are either of your parents a dislocated worker? If you click on that blue word that says dislocated worker, it will tell you what the definition of that is, and that way you can determine whether or not one of them is a dislocated worker, okay? You're then going to answer or check off any of these boxes that apply to your parents or anyone in your household. So if your sibling receives free or reduced lunch, you're going to click there. If they receive Medicaid, supplemental security insurance, any of these, you're gonna select it. If it's none of the above, you're gonna click on none of the above. And then we'll go ahead and click next. So parent additional IRS information. Enter the amount of your parents' income tax. This is a total amount of IRS form 1040. And then again, it's going to tell you what lines to look at. So you're going to subtract whatever amount is on line 13 from line 46. So you'll be able to find these on the taxes, okay? So did your parents have any of the following items in 2018? You're gonna enter the amounts that apply. So if your parents were ever um, served the Army or the Marines or any of the US forces and were injured and received combat pay or special pay because of an injury that was caused while they were serving, you're gonna enter that amount here. If you um, received any scholarships or grants, any of that information is going to go on here. Every line is going to tell you where you can check this information on the tax return forms, and it's always gonna help guide you that way, okay? So please make sure you reference where to look. Next, please answer the following questions before selecting next. So this is asking if your parents, child support your parents paid because of a divorce or separation or as a result of a legal requirement. So that is the amount you would enter in box one. Earnings from a work under a cooperative education program offered by a college, that's what you would enter in box two. If none of these apply to your parents, you're just going to enter zero and then click next. This is asking child support received for all children. So maybe your parents don't pay child support, but they receive child support, right? This is where you would enter that. If it's zero, you're gonna enter zero. And then you're gonna read the other questions and enter the amounts as they are. If it's zero, you're just gonna enter zero and go on to the next section. As of today, does the total amount of your per parents' current assets, assets exceed $6,100? So assets are basically anything that they own, property, vehicles, investments. So as of today, everything that they own combined, does it exceed the amount of $6,100? And every um, student is going to have a different amount here. This is just based on the information that I entered for my financial aid application. So please don't get nervous if you see something that's a little bit different. Every application will vary. So yes or no, and then you're gonna go on to the next question. This question is referring to you, the student, okay? So no longer your parents. So this is asking for 2018, did you, the student, complete an IRS tax return? Which would mean that you worked and made more than a certain amount of money a year. So for me, it would be, no, I'm not going to file, and I'm just gonna continue next. If you are a student who did work in 2018 and did file taxes, you're going to click completed, already completed, and then it will ask you similar questions to it that it asked for your parents' information, okay? So for me, it's gonna be not going to file. Okay. So if you did not work in 2018, you would just enter zero. So how much did you earn from working wages, salaries, tips, et cetera, in 2018? So again, I did not file taxes. I'm just going to enter zero and I'm going to click next. So child support that I paid, it's zero. Earnings from a work cooperative education program, it's zero. Taxable earnings from need-based employment programs, it's gonna be zero for me, and then I'm gonna go on to the next question. 
So this is, again, is asking about you. Did you as a student have to pay child support? You're gonna read the following questions, answer them. If it's zero, you're just gonna enter zero and move on. But if you notice, this is asking about you, the student. The next question is asking, how much today do you have in your current cash, savings, and checking account? Okay, for me, I'm going to enter zero for all of them, right? I don't have any net worth investments. I don't own any real estate, so it's gonna be zero. I don't have any bus businesses or investment farms, so it's gonna be zero. It is up to you to whether um, you have a checking or savings account and want to enter the amount that you have on there, okay? I'm gonna go on to the next question. So this page will only show up if you had opted to link your FSA username and password to the IRS data retrieval tool. So this only applies to students who worked in 2018, completed their taxes, and then selected that they wanted to link their taxes to the IRS data retrieval tool, okay? So if you did not work in 2018 and you are not linking your taxes, please disregard this page. If you did work in 2018 and you are linking your data information to the IRS, you're going to enter this information that I've entered here for you. And it has to match exactly what it is that you entered in your tax return forms. So for example, please take a look at your tax return forms. And for your street address, let's just say you entered 123 4th Street and you abbreviated street on the tax returns, you have to abbreviate it on this section as well. It has to match exactly what you entered on your IRS tax forms. So again, the address must match exactly to you or your parents' IRS tax returns. So if the tax returns reflect the street abbreviated, you have to abbreviate it. Then you're gonna click Submit. Check this box off where I put an arrow for you. You will check off the Transfer My Tax Information and then you'll click Transfer Now. Please note that this is asking if you, the student, has filed taxes again. And please notice that this is asking for student information and not the parent. So please answer the following questions about financial um, support for children that you may or may not have. Do, does somebody else pay you child support? And this is again, you, the student. Are you a prepare? And this is put in parentheses as being rare because if you did not pay somebody to complete your financial aid application, right? Then you are not a prepare. If you answer yes, this would mean that you paid someone to complete this application for you. So for myself and for most of us, it's going to be no. And then we're gonna select the next button. So do you wanna skip questions about your assets? I'm going to select yes. And again, assets refer to property or businesses. So this question is asking if you would like to answer a question about your assets. So now we are almost at the end, student information. So it wants you to read um, this information and then whether or not you do agree to the terms to submit your financial aid application. If you would like to sign online, you would agree to the terms and click next. For parent sig signature, in order for your parent to sign online, they must have created an FSA ID and password. If they did not, you will have to print a signature page and submit the signature page to the person um, in the financial aid office. You can still submit your financial aid application without your parent's signature. So this is very important. You wanna make sure that you submit your application before the deadline. You can submit without your parent's signature. Your financial aid application will not be considered complete until you submit that paper. However, it is time stamped that you completed it before the due date if you submit without the signature. This next page, you'll get a confirmation page after you have submitted and you will also receive a confirmation email, okay? And this will provide an idea of how much your family estimated contribution will be. 
So my FAFSA page is for renewal students. FAFSA renewal. And then um, if you would like to sign online, you must agree to the terms and then click on next. For those of you who have been selected for verification or are requested to order IRS transcripts, the IRS transcripts are different from the tax returns, okay? It is not the same thing. So in order to order IRS transcripts, you would have to go to the irs.gov website. I've put the information here for you. So if you want to um, screenshot it, I will give you guys a few seconds to go ahead and get the information. So step one, you're gonna go to that www.irs.gov website. Then you're going to select get your tax record, okay, which is here on the first screen. So um, you have the option. I do want to make clear that I have noticed with everything that's going on with COVID, they are no longer at this time allowing you to request the transcript by mail. That has been placed on hold. You are actually for this current time being only able to request your transcript online. You will be directed to this page to request a transcript, right? If you opt to request them online, which is the only option that you have unless you call the IRS directly, you're going to have to have the information that's in this box. So it's really important that you know that if you've been selected for verification, you have the information that's in this pink box. At this time, unfortunately, they're not doing any requests by mail. If for whatever reason, you're unable to request the information via online, please contact the financial aid office and representative so that you can attempt to get an extension. So the US government system is for authorized use only. You will see this, you will click next or okay. And then this used to be an option, get the transcript by mail, right? At this time, again, I'm sorry, it is not an option. So you would have to select the online option or get directly in contact with the IRS. So that concludes my financial aid presentation. I appreciate you guys coming and checking it out. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, please go ahead and email us at the bottom. You can still call us and we now on our website have a chat option. So in case you run into any problems or any hurdles or you're unsure about how to do this, please go ahead and contact us.